On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have fisherman senior editor Fred Galafaro with all the details from the South Shore Surf Classic. Long Island managing editor Matthew Broderick has a new how-to segment, a preview of the top stories in the November issue of the Fisherman Magazine, and reports from all around the island by fishermen like you. All here at the new fisherman.com. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. The November issue of The Fisherman is out now. Jim Hutchinson has the incredible story on the 2020 tracking study of striped bass here in the Northeast. Frank Mahalik has a great read on targeting trophy tog. Jerry Audette shares his tips on tweaking bucktails. These and many more great articles are in the November issue of The Fisherman magazine on newsstands now. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin sent me this impressive blackfish caught by Brian that was caught around the Jones Inlet area. Hopefully, he has a good outlook for the weekend fishing weather. Rich? All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, Anglers, let's check the weekend forecast, see what we got going on again this weekend. It uh, looks like another split decision here. It looks like uh, Saturday is going to be the pick of the weekend. Starting out with water temps generally in the 60s still. Hasn't cooled down too much, uh, maybe next week a bit. Uh, wave height, Saturday, pick of the weekend, two to four, not too bad along the coast, four to eight, a little offshore, and uh, the seas really calmed down nicely for most of Saturday. Sound should be okay. And then Sunday, we get more of a, a south southwesterly breeze. So those two to fours, four to eight start to come back. So the calmer day in the ocean, nicer day is going to be Saturday. Uh, the future cast winds generally north to northeast on Saturday. You know, figure about five to 15, not too bad lightening up towards uh, Saturday afternoon. So a pretty good ride back should be fine. Sunday, we go back around to the south and southwest, you know, 15 up to 20, maybe 25 in the afternoon. So it's going to be rougher on Sunday, no doubt. Also be some more clouds in there with the sun coming in. High tides, got that big full moon, the blue moon on uh, Halloween Saturday. It'll be about midday on the high tides on the North Shore, about 7, 8 a.m. on the South Shore. It's going to be a chilly day. Saturday's highs in the 40s, so it's going to be the colder day. And we're back to some 50s. Looks like the warmer day will be on Sunday. Check the view real quickly, see what we got going on here. There's your Saturday. And, you know, generally light north-northeast breezes. So that's going to be the better day. Sea's kind of calming down pretty good, so it looks pretty decent. There's your Sunday. Some colors show up. Uh, South-southwest start to get a real good uh, gusty breeze from the southwest here. And those seas are going to build towards uh, mid to late morning Sunday. So it looks like Saturday will be the pick for the, the calmer day of the weekend. So again, be safe as always. Good fishing. Enjoy your weekend. Tim, back to you. Remember, be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before you head out on the water. Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro has the results from last week's South Shore Surf Classic and more. Fred? Hey, Tim. Yeah, we ran the uh, South Shore Classic over the weekend. It was hosted by the fishermen in Long Island State Park, sponsored by Tsunami, and also Capture Bait and Tackle. Uh, considering the, uh, the restrictions in place because of COVID-19, went very well. A lot of people had a great time. People were very happy that we were able to run the tournament. And uh, all entries had to fall within the 28 to 35 inch slot. Uh, not surprisingly, all top three fish were 35 inches. Uh, Rich Sullivan took first place with a 16.18 pounder worth $750. Ahmed Davies, uh, he took second place with a 15.60. And Bill Bernard had a 15.50 for third place. Second and third place winners received pan reels. Uh, great goodie bags this year, uh, which kind of made up for the lack of uh, an awards ceremony raffle. Uh, Tsunami came through with three nice lures for each package, plus State Parks threw some goodies in there into the bags, and um, uh, it just worked out really well with the drive-through process. Uh, it's nice to know, you know, we can still hold the tournament successfully, have a good time uh, during these restrictions. Um, some people didn't catch fish, some people complained, you know, they got shut out, but they still had a good time. Others, like uh, Andrew Biscardi and Mike Adio, uh, over the course of the weekend, they figured they had about 80 stripers, uh, mostly Saturday and Sunday. Lots of fish between 24 and 27 inches, but they also had uh, a 36-inch 19-pounder, several slot fish in the 28 to 33-inch range, and uh, they said they had all the fish on soft plastics with pink and white, the hot colors. So there were plenty of fish out there. The tournament ranged from Mariches to Jones Beach, 
not sure where these guys fish and not sure they're too quick to tell us exactly where but the fish are out there the sand bite is on uh, don't forget the view striped bass tournament is coming up next tuesday election day uh, you can sign up at the restaurant uh, prior to that or on monday night between 6 and 8 p.m entry fee is 50 dollars if you want more details, check out the ad in the November issue of The Fisherman that's out this week. Or you can call Jimmy Hahn, 631-589-2694. The results are in from last week's Long Island Sound Blackfish Tournament held this past Saturday. And Frank DiPietro from Connecticut took first place with this 11.6 pound blackfish. The fish was weighed in at Fisherman's World in East Norwalk. Over $4,000 was raised for the United Cerebral Palsy Foundation of Long Island. There's a nice pick of fish along the South Shore. Let's check in with Long Island Managing Editor Matthew Broderick from Smith's Point. Matt? Hey Tim, we're down here at Smith's Point Beach. Guys are picking away at bass using diamond jigs, bucktails, stuff along those lines. Uh, fish are right set up and tight. Uh, they've been picking out all morning, a lot of schoolies, uh, these fish have been here for a while. Those are supposed to get a blow, so we'll see what happens, hopefully the fish stick around after that, but it's pretty good fishing, it's a fishy day out, and uh, we're going to get one right now. Also on the beach, Sean Ziegler had a nice blitz around the Jones Beach area. He said that he had 14 mostly slot bass using a diamond jig teaser combo with the teaser catching every fish. Then Joe Ben Savanga fished near the same area with a nice mix of schoolies and slots. Here's his buddy's son, PJ, with a nice slot fish they released. Now, let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Thanks, Tim. Well, another exciting week out here in Montauk. Fishing uh, the, in the fall just keeps getting better and better. Uh, a lot of good reports from the surf casting point of view. Um, Jimmy Angelitas had a great day on Monday right out in front of the lighthouse. Uh, I said he had all day nonstop action. Um, Sunday, I was driving the south side. There's fish pretty much from town down to gurneys, uh, a couple pods here and there. So if you put the time in, you're definitely gonna get some good fish surf casting. North side, still been the place to be. Uh, concession stand, North Bar, False Bar, all the usual spots have been doing very well and have been pretty productive. Um, fly fishing, light tackle, still getting plenty of nice bass. False albacore coming back in. Um, we're getting some cold weather, which is pushing the fish back in, and they're getting a little bit more predominant. Um, in regards to cod fishing, a couple guys out of Star Island were fishing with Caesar. They had some nice cod fish. Um, I saw those guys on Saturday. Um, not much going on in the offshore report. Uh, weather's been pretty marginal, so not a lot of guys venturing out there. Um, big talk blackfish as always we're doing really good out here um, I today on Wednesday was out I got my limit had a nice day of black fishing took a little break um, Viking five star is doing some really good wreck trips uh, a couple nice pictures here catching jumbo sea bass uh, Steve Forsberg's telling me they're extra 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 large sea bass and a bunch of codfish so the codfish story is really looking good for the winter. Um, we're seeing a lot of nice shots of cod, so hopefully that'll stick through the winter and that gives somebody some inspiration for the winter. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everyone. Uh, best time of the year. Striped bass all over the place. Um, I'm mostly surf casting and it's been really good. Uh, sunset bite has been great. You know, you hit those nights. Tonight I was out, only got two fish in maybe like an hour or so. A couple of, a couple of days ago, I got about 27 fish in like an hour or so. Uh, those fish at sunset seem to be between 26 and 28, although last week did have a nice uh, bu bunch of slot fish came through, and they just bounce around every beach. It's a sand eel bite, so it's diamond jigs, bucktails. Um, I kind of like throwing the bucktail. I've had better luck with that. When there's been a win, then the diamond jig has, has worked as well. Uh, the A27 size, I have thrown the A17, didn't really have much luck on that. Uh, anything that looks anything like a sand eel should be working, needlefish, etc. cetera. Um, but like I said, I've had my most luck with the bucktail. Uh, definitely have to put that time in at night. That's when people are getting personal best after personal best. It's not a huge one, but for me, 33 inches uh, on Saturday night, just after dark, was an awesome fish, great fight. Um, but like I said, they've been all up and down the beach, so get out there. 
Uh, weather looks a little dicey for a couple of days, but should be able to get some time in this weekend. By boat, the inlets, drifting bucktails, drifting eels is working. Uh, fish don't seem to be as big in uh, Shinnecock. They seem to be a little better size from riches, and obviously outside the inlet on the bunker pods. Um, and of course, like I keep saying every week, um, if you're gonna snag a bunker, throw it on a circle hook, please. Uh, other than that, I haven't heard a whole lot uh, going on in terms of uh, sea bass blackfish bite um, off the west side of Shinnecock. It's been pretty good. It does get a little crowded, so um, you know, when you can get in there, do it. Uh, you can go back into Matt Broderick's videos on our YouTube channel. Has plenty of guides and uh, a couple of frustrating moments for him, but uh, it's a really fun fish to catch. So um, get out there, catch him up. Talk to you next week. Last week, Mike Dean had a question for Matthew Broderick on fishing a needlefish. Hey, Matt, what's going on, man? Well, as you can see from the wall, I have an awful lot of plugs, and there's an awful lot of them I don't really know how to use well and haven't connected uh, to any fish with. One of these plugs that's always kind of miffed me, I carry it in my bag all the time, I throw it, uh, but I've yet to catch a fish on it, is the uh, needlefish. Um, this one is uh, Super Strike. I believe it's like two ounces. I know there's a difference between loaded needlefish, not loaded needlefish. Uh, this one I don't believe is loaded. Um, you know, I just constantly hear of big catches on them, guys using them as kind of their fish finder if they're going to stick in an area. So if you could just kind of enlighten me a little bit and the rest of us on uh, the retrieve, the action. I know they don't have a lot of action, so I know I'm doing something wrong. Hope you can help me out. Mike Dean brought up a good question to me about fishing needlefish in the surf. These plugs can either be fished during the day or at night. Preferably, I do like to fish them at night. The way I'll fish them is it's really straightforward and simple. I'll cast that plug out, let it sink down, and just continue with the slow retrieve. Uh, Fred once told me, Fred Galfaro, that it's the do nothing plug. You just cast out and retrieve. It's really, you do nothing. You can incorporate a little twitch in there once in a while, but they're pretty straightforward to fish. The only thing you have to know about fishing needlefish is certain weights for certain situations that's the only thing you have to take into mind when fishing a needlefish so mike give it a shot and it's more of a confidence thing with the needlefish once you start catching on it that's when you'll really succeed with one if you have a question on using a specific lure matt will do his best to answer that question shoot me over an email at libayrat at gmail.com and we will get the question over to me. after the fall run is over and it's time to put the boat away for the winter marine mate of lindenhurst has everything you need to decommission your boat and their knowledgeable staff is there to guide you along the way marine mate in lindenhurst from the fire island area in the great south bay let's check in with captain al lorenzetti hey tim fire island report for the bass fishing is hot uh a lot of shorts a good amount of fish in the slot size and some big ones too. I had a great week. I had fish to 40 pounds on plugs and uh, a lot of short fish and a lot of slot fish every day, pretty much limiting out, limiting out on slot size fish, 28 to 35 inches. And uh, the action is good. I'm fishing plugs and live bait. And uh, like I said, a lot of fish inside and then in the ocean when you can get out there because the weather's been so bad, but you know, there's a catch of some big fish, uh, but it's kind of spotty right now, and I expect the jig fishing when the weather really gets chilly, which is going to this Saturday, looks like the day to fish. Friday and Sunday look pretty tough, but when the weather gets cold, like it's going to start happening on Saturday, that's when the jig fishing turns on in the ocean. So look forward to that. But right now, inside Fire Island, bass fishing, black fishing, excellent. All right, Tim? Take care. Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle in Northport. What's going on up there in the North Shore? Can you believe it's the last week in October? We're right before Halloween. We've got a full moon today and it's lights out fishing, man. I, you couldn't ask for a better fall run this year. This is like the year of the COVID, lots of problems, but the fish showed up to stay. A lot of people got into fishing and I got to tell you, it's been a great uplifting experience. Let people get out there and join and sharing great memories. And it's been fishing. It's like boom, 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 the Tyson knockout punch. Striped bass, uh, bluefish, false albacore, peanut bunker, adult bunker, anchovy, sand eels, every type of fish on them, weak fish, uh, false albacore, bonito, striped bass, bluefish, you name it. There's action from Crane's Neck into the river 
all the way down the open beaches right over there in Northport, in the Bay, Centerport, Huntington. There's always something going on. And keep your eye out. There's got to be a, a squid run happening really soon. And uh, it's just great. Look at these overcast days. The thermal difference in why we're seeing all this fog. That's because these uh, air is getting cooler and the water temperatures, are, uh, they're going up into the air and it, it creates like this difference in the water temperature and the bass love it plus it totally hides them from the sun so if you're into like morning and daytime fishing this is that time of the year for you and i would get out there while well, we can probably round out the next three four weeks for some dynamic fishing whether you're on those blackfish or any of the other number of fish it said earlier it's just really really great and if you live on the south shore and get to those open beaches it's like striped bass city you know practice your uh your release techniques uh keep those pictures you know really good give the fish a little wash a kiss maybe uh you save yourself some turmoil online if you can you know wash your fish a little bit because sometimes i see some of these uh these comments and it could be like really really brutal so you don't want to hurt anybody's feeling but at the same time you kind of want to keep it real you know what i'm saying so uh you know pass a little advice if you hear it remember take a cool picture for somebody uh and and keep close to the water get it in there and remember the faster you take a picture and release it faster you can catch another fish so it works out for everybody you know and uh it's just uh great great stuff listen happy halloween until i hear from you or speak to you on the next reports i bid you tight lines and peace now back to the south shore with brendan ritigliano of captory bait and tackle hey tim long time no see uh, guys, this week was awesome. Uh, striped bass have been killing it in the inlet over here at Robin Moses, uh, Fire Island Inlet. You know, we're, we're doing great over here. Not too many bluefish, but there is some still. Uh, sea bass, porgies, um, there's some shad around. Honestly, it's a great time to fish, especially for striped bass. Uh, again, we had that tournament this weekend. We had uh, fish 35 inches coming through the door, you know, at every couple of hours, knocking out each other by like a quarter of a pound. Uh, so, yeah, come by the shop if you want to know more. And uh, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Tim. Well, I, now I'm kind of switching my over from uh, freshwater and I'm doing a lot of salt water and uh, it's it's been you know interesting I've had a good fairly good days I actually uh, guided yesterday uh, I took a couple of my friends out and the wind the, the everything was horrible but we found the spot um, fishing in the George Beach area a couple of shad bluefish uh, we had a terrific day. We learned a lot where to go, you know, what winds work best, what tides work best. We had a terrific time. Now, today, I was pl I had the pleasure of going out with Duck Dennis, and he took me around, showed me some of his places that he fishes with a boat. But now I have some ideas of the, on my own. Uh, it was good. We, we actually had uh, stripers. We were fishing in the back. It was a little windy. We couldn't really use the fly rods, but we did use the plugging rods, and we did pretty good. We had a lot of hits. We landed three fish. Uh, it was a terrific day. We had a lot of fun. Uh, it's always good to get out. You know, you live here on Long Island, a couple hours, into fish, had a good time. So until next week, tie lines, everybody. Kale's Family Boating Center is ready to get you out on the water. Check out a Sea Pro powered by Suzuki. New models are in stock now, but they may not last. Visit kalesfamilyboating.com for more information. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig, see what he's up to. Hey, thanks, Tim. What's going on, guys? So this last week, there was a lot of good bait in the backwater. I was fishing some bridges by me, and we saw some squid. We saw some herring. There was a lot of small rain bait, and the bass and blues were on them. We capitalized with some Kitek paddle tails, and this new bait I've been using called, um, uh, I forget the name, honestly, but it's a company called No Live Bait Needed. It's this imitation mullet, and it's beautiful. It's been working out great. Moving forward, my buddy Bobby's been getting on the daytime bite in the beach, hammering the striped bass and the diamond jigs. He got some fish that were slot size, but a lot of the ones on the, uh, excuse me, were on the smaller side. I'm at the beach right now myself, and when the sun creeps up, I'm going to get out there and throw some jigs and see what happens. There's a lot of life, like I said, guys, and I hope you're getting out there with those jigs, bucktails, even anything. There's a good striped bass fishery right now. Take care. 
Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, said he's been fishing his local Queens Park on the western Long Island Sound and catching spotted hake and schooly bass on the incoming tide. He expects the bigger fish to arrive when the water temps cool down. We have a new correspondent checking in from the Big Apple, Amal Salome. Hey Tim, it's Amal with the Brooklyn Fishing Club. The fall run for Striper has been solid, leaving from Staten Island and Brooklyn, heading towards the New York Bay and the Verrazano Narrows. Lots of slots and big releases of 50 plus pound jumbos are being caught on bait and trolling. Blackfish continue to keep us hunting out on the piers of Brooklyn with some keepers and many shorts using green crabs and jigs. The boat trip seemed to be doing a little bit better near the lower bay. Green crabs were working well down in Battery Park with many keepers on the slack tide. The weather didn't do much to help this weekend and sea bass were coming up pretty small in all of these areas. There are also sightings of silver sides up in the Gowanus Bay. Off of City Island in the Bronx, boats are reporting spotty results for blackfish using white and green crabs. The bigger, more consistent bite seems to be east towards the end of the sound into Rhode Island. Make sure you get out there and get your shot or you'll have to wait till the spring. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Coastal Kayak Clash Contest and win this Old Town Autopilot Kayak worth over 4,000 bucks. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and more information and please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. It's bass season and tog times so get out there and fish hard and we'll see you right here next week at the all-new fisherman.com.